Hello and welcome to a new episode of our measurement course. Today we're going to measure level. So we're talking about level measurement. So we want basically we have some container somehow like this. for instance, and we want to see how full this is with whatever liquid. Okay, So there is some liquid inside and we want to see how full this is. This is the task, level measurement. A very easy thing I will show you at the application. Okay? This is a oil tank from a hydraulic system, there you see the pumps and, and filters and so on. And here we have the measurement device, a looking glass, yeah? a gauge glass, whatever. Very simple, very effective. Okay? Of course very effective, because everyone can read it and understand it. There is no discussion about it. Yeah? It's cheap. Yeah? Here you see some markings. These are for commissioning reasons. This was photo was taken during a commissioning, commissioning phase of the hydraulic system. And there you have to mark uh, the oil, oil levels in different operational states that you know if you're losing oil or not. Okay, so there are the possibility that this looking glass, this gauge glass, this, glass, this indicator glass is directly connected like here or you can even set it a little bit off the tank here's the pressure tank in this in this case and there is the level yeah this is even a little bit more yeah? you see there is the looking glass and there is the indicator yeah and you can even open and close those those lines with the ball valves and exchange it if it would be broken. This this here is a real looking glass. Yeah? Easy, cheap. Yeah? However, uh, there is no remote there is no remote reading of this. Yeah? It's just if you're there you can look at it. Okay? In this case you see here some switches, yeah, because you don't you don't really see the looking glass here, yeah. The looking glass is behind this indication, and there is a swimmer. Yeah? There is a swimmer inside, which will move this indicator up and down. Yeah? This is also a method yeah? that we have in in our in our compartment somewhere a swimmer which is moving an indicator and I can read it outside the outside the tank. Here these are limit switches. Limit high, limit low. So that if the indicator is dropping the limit switch will switch and we know okay the level is below. It's maybe not that good. Looking glass method, swimmer method. Then there is, for instance, uh, you know it for sure, I'll draw another tank here. Here is some opening. Yeah. Here is the liquid. Here is the liquid, and you could place some ruler here, you can stick it in the ruler, you can pull it out, and then you see the mark which is 
left on the ruler yeah like on your engine in your motor uh, in your engine in your car uh, the oil level check yeah? pale stop yeah? also very easy very easy very cheap however if this is a bigger tank and so on you need to climb up and that is not very very convenient to use and also there is no remote remote measurement possible with this okay measuring rod measuring So we had, at first we had the looking glass, oh. or the gauche glass, then we had the swimmer, the swimmer was like this, there is somewhere a swimmer which swims in the liquid, yeah, whatever form, up, pointer scale okay this is not really in scale because it will move maybe the pointer is not directly connected but with some sort of of some sort of cord cable wire system yeah mechanically connected so looking glass swimmer measuring rod all very cheap systems okay. then of course you could also take a swimmer like here okay. a variation of the swimmer method this is the tank this is the level of the liquid again and then we do have here some ballast material okay the liquid the liquid does have one density the air above has another density the liquid is usually usually denser than the air okay? and then the portion which is sunken here yeah. because this is also some sort of density the swimmer yeah and then we receive a force yeah? which is pulling up there is a force and I can measure this force simply over here. So I measure the force, change it to some measurement current or whatever, and that's it. The more the force is, the higher, the higher the liquid is inside the compartment. This thing here is really, 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 really accurate. Okay. It's really accurate. So this is a displacement body. So we have here a displacement body. Which will produce force. Okay. Displacement device. And I measure the force really accurate however you are somehow reliant on the density of the material on the density difference between those two materials yeah. so actually we are measuring we are measuring uh, density difference yeah. so it's not suitable for liquids which change in density too much come to the next method yeah. next method would be if I'm already reliant to density then I could simply 
place a measuring device down here and this is measuring pressure this is measuring pressure we'll shift it to a current signal maybe it's located on the cable or on a, a rod or something like this and here we have the transformer from the current to the level and this will be transferred to somewhere else yeah. I measure here the hydrostatic pressure from the from the liquid yeah. measure the pressure the higher the liquid gets the higher the pressure is because there is weight there is weight of this liquid and I measure here the head of the liquid okay. can do it either this way or maybe I have here some flange and mount it directly measure the pressure and get out the level Here we measure hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure. Okay. One possibility. Easy demand. Easy demand. Accuracy is quite good in this case. Okay. However, I'm already also depending on the specific weight yeah, on the density of this material and also if this is a pressurized tank yeah, so there is a P0 somehow inside this is not working very well yeah, because I have to measure the pressure of the air and the pressure of the, of the uh, liquid yeah. so I have to measure differential pressure of course it's working but then it's getting expensive also Right. Also a problem if this if this liquid here is very mm, aggressive, yeah, very aggressive, then you might not find a suitable membrane in this pressure measurement that this is working very well. So I have then to separate somehow the pressure measurement from the from the liquid, and this might be done like this. Yeah. So there is the tank again. There's the tank, there is the liquid, pretty much the same situation. Let's say this is again a liquid, uh, this is now a liquid which is very, very aggressive. Then I can use something like this, I can use a tube, which I'm manufacturing from some material I know it withstands the, the pressure of the liquid here. Yeah? It can deal with it. Then I install the following. I install this here is pressurized air. Yeah? And here we have a flow flow meter this flow meter is checking is checking if the pressurized air if there's already pressurized air running through yeah? and there is a valve and this valve is controlled by the flow meter if no air is running through yeah? then the pressure behind there's a throttle point here behind the throttle point is not enough to, to blow out pressure here okay. that's not enough so it will open the throttle point yeah. up to the point where here air is leaking yeah. here is air leaking 
a certain amount of air running through the flow meter checks this it's satisfied it's satisfied with the with the throttle point and we have a stable position and we can measure here the pressure and this is an indicator for the level so now I can use very aggressive materials basically it's the same measurement yeah but now I can use uh, very aggressive materials very aggressive liquids and it's still working however the disadvantage is I have a constant air loss here constant air loss and uh, maybe this air is then somehow freezing or, or, or condensing air in winter this, there, there may be other problems with this but it's not the, the danger of the liquid anymore okay so these beads are typical yeah? bead method let's call it bead method I'm right bead method in German it's MPL Rohr Methode as I call it Beat tube. <laughs> if this is correct, I'm not sure. Because there are beads coming from a tube and pelvis. Okay. So also, this is a possibility. Huh? We again depending on the on the density. And if we are depending on the density, why not fully depend on the density and do it rather simple? Okay, do it rather simple by taking the tank which is filled again with some liquid to a certain amount, what we want to know. Yeah. Why don't we just put it on a scale? We wait, we measure the weight of the tank. Yeah? The more it weights, the fuller it must be. Yeah? Rather easy. Yeah? Scale, scale method, weighting method. Uh, can be very accurate if the density is accurate yeah? measures directly the content the liquid content and not just the level yeah? so it can be used with, with tanks with different forms and you have the measurement of the content and not of the level okay? uh, however you need to place the tank at the position where you can put it on the scale you need to there is a lot of construction work around this yeah it's not just plugging in some sensor it's a little bit more yeah you need to build in the scale you need to see that this tank is resting on the scale and so on and so on so it needs to be a little bit a little bit more attention in construction so it cannot be just refitted yeah? refitting is is not that easy with this with this method if we're having a liquid which is conductive, yeah, we could do it like this. We could place a tank. This is the tank. Yeah. Here is the liquid that might that must be conducted for conductive for this method. Yeah. And then I'm using different electrodes in different heights yeah. one long electrode one shorter electrode one even shorter electrode and one tiny electrode yeah. and a measure actually a measure if I have between the different different positions between 
here and here, I measure the resistance. Uh, between here and here I measure the resistance, always to the tank for instance. Uh, this is actually what I measure. If suddenly I get a current flowing from here to here, I know the liquid must, must at least be at this position. If suddenly the second second electrode is, is starting to contact, then I know I'm here. The third, so this is one, two. So I always get in steps level measurement. And that's it. Yeah. So this is this is I call it conductive. method Leitfähigkeitsmethode okay. very simple however must be must be uh, conductive liquid and there is always the chance that you destroy that you destroy the electrodes yeah. there's not only the chance because you know um, if liquids are conductive, they usually there are ions, and ions transport masses, and these are usually somehow wearing these electrodes. Either the one electrode, the tank, or the other electrode, the the real electrodes which are mounted. Okay. If we are not having conductive materials, we could also use some electrical electrical part. Yeah. So. I will throw off much more broader tank. Again, there is the ooh, filling, 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 filling. Either I have here some electrodes. This time I will make it green. And the other electrode, the other electrode is the tank again, like before. Okay, like before. Then here we do have some epsilon r, and we have some epsilon r. This is around one, yeah, and here we have some epsilon r. Is epsilon r. If you remember, this is somehow influencing the electrical field. So if I charge this, this is nothing more than a capacitor, and the field lines would look like this. Yeah. And they are much more, if this epsilon r is greater than 1, then these field lines are more dense in the part which is filled with liquid okay so this is a capacitor and below here we have much more much more electrical field yeah so this means the more it fills the more yeah, the more we will raise our capacity of our capacitor yeah? So this is the this is a capacitor between the electrode and the tank wall, yeah? and the more it fills, the higher the capacity of the capacitor will be. And if I measure the capacity of the capacitor, <laughs> and I get this and that amount of farad, then I know how high this is filled. Can also be done. Now this is a dielectrical method, yeah capacity method working pretty well yeah. working pretty well however we do have sometimes the issue that these walls and so on this is not very linear yeah. so there are measuring rods outside I will now make this to indicate that this is a 
different different thing I will mark here with two lines so this is one method and also there are electrodes outside which look like this it's a tube it's a tube and inside this tube there is a rod let's see if I can manage to show you here it's broken open let's meet some drawing standards here this is a rod yeah this is a tube inside this tube there's a rod and here inside we have now a capacitor which is at even yeah so because the electrical field now is between the rod and the side walls this is a zoom detail A <laughs> <laughs> and here we do have the electrical field yeah. but this time much more uniform than before and if we have here somewhere the filling yeah, then we do have the same effect like before that we have here a denser electrical field and the capacity is, is increasing the more it is filled yeah? however with the defined defined capacity okay capacity it's still the same method yeah but i'm not using the wall as second second part of the capacitor i have already two parts with a plug-in of course there must be above here there must be some holes to get out the air that this inner liquid stand and the outer liquid stand are the same and the field the field area is just between the tube and the rod okay capacity method disadvantage of this capacity method is that you cannot uh, use it with different type of liquids or it's it's rather difficult to use it with different type of liquids because if this er changes here yeah then you maybe have problems yeah. indicating the wrong wrong feeling of course okay the big advantages are there is there are there are no moving parts yeah the pressure inside is totally does not we don't care about the pressure inside and it's very very commonly can be commonly used even if these materials are very aggressive yeah? no issue no issue here okay next next sheet if we are having if we are having for instance a silo like this and it's filled with grain gravel or whatever and i want to measure i want to measure the filling inside this yeah? so there is somewhere there is somewhere this time it's not a liquid this time it's somehow sand or grain gravel whatever yeah then there is a method where we can mount can make it a different color little moving parts there are some small motors yeah? and there are rotating wings here they're constantly turning yeah? and once they are covered once they are covered with our measurement 
grain material, let's call it material, yeah, then they are stuck. Yeah, because I mean it's it's just it's just like a spinning blade. Yeah, spinning rotor. And once they are covered, they are stuck. Either there is some some clutch inside and the motor is still turning or even if the motor is is good enough or or adjusted like this the motor is stopped and you can notice it if it stopped or not according the power consumption of the motor and then you know if this is stopped this must be covered if this is stopped this must be covered if this is stopped this must be covered if it's turning it's turning okay there are different possibilities on how to mount them there are things like this with a little gearbox on the side yeah there are things which come down from the top yeah there are uh, different different possibilities yeah yet there are even things which can be mounted like this on a not even wall yeah? however this this is a rotary rotary method Flügel Methode. Okay. As you can imagine, since these are things, I mean, the principle is rather easy. Yeah? This is the advantage. But if you can imagine, uh, these are mechanical parts rotating, the wear is there. The wear is there. Yeah? So it's needs, it needs uh, care. Yeah? You need to, to care this, you need to maintain these things. It's not that easy. Yeah? And if the things, if the uh, material is too too uh, heavy, it's also not, not working very well. Yeah? Another method for heavy materials or things like this. Let's again throw the silo. Another method to measure the filling height is this. Here we do have a spool. Do have a spool. We do have a weight, yeah? and the spool and the weight they are connected. They're connected to each other. Okay. The method now operates like this the spool is unspooled by motor yeah the tension the tension of the string is measured yeah if the string's tension is getting loose yeah then i know the weight is somehow lying on the side then slowly i will up pull it up again until the tension is as it was before then i know i'm exactly located my my weight is exactly at the surface and the only thing then i have to do is spool it up again measure how many turns i used then i know the length of the the length of this of this uh string the length of this string okay so basically, basically it's a plump line, you can say. Yeah, we'll call it in in German. In German, it's called a uh, uh, load system. I will call it uh, plump line system. The big advantage is I can use this thing with really big tanks. Yeah? No issue. I can spool it down 70 meters, no issue. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. It does not really care which material is down there. If it's gravel, if it's sand, if it's if it's I don't know fluor, if it's it does not really matter at all. Yeah, just hit to have to hit the surface. That's it. Yeah. Disadvantage. Also, I need here maintenance, yeah? and of course, 
it's not a continuous measurement. Yeah? It takes a while until I get the reading. Yeah? So if it's highly dynamical, this is not the correct method of measuring the height. Some methods we still have. Yeah? So, one method is to use the tamping. of the material which is filled in. So here is the here is the filling. Yeah. Then I could then I could mount on this side here some source of I don't know electromagnetic valve and here is the receiver. Okay? Here is the loudspeaker and here is the microphone let's call it yeah. so there is the level measurement on this side yeah. and here are the waves microwaves sound optical maybe optical has the disadvantage that this might get dirty here yeah and if I do this several times here yeah. I know exactly which parts are covered okay so I measure the damping of a certain of a certain wave which I'm sending through yeah. that would be one possibility yeah. here again I have if this is very sticky, yeah, so that this is sticking also on the wall here a little bit, yeah, or very hot or very, very aggressive and so on, then I have mm, the possibility that I really, then I cannot just open here, yeah, or if it's too much pressure, yeah, if I just cannot open it here, or I'm sure this will not work properly, then I can fall back to a solution which is sounds in first rather exotic mm -hmm. totally enclosed material yeah, because it's sticky gluey whatever yeah here I have a radiation source so this is here we have radiation okay gamma radiation this is then distributed from here and is going through the whole container you know there are alpha radiators there are beta radiators and there are of course gamma radiators yeah, gamma radiators pass through almost everything and on the other side I do have the detector yeah? and inside this detector I can see where it passes, where it is damped and where it is really damped yeah? because this, this material will then damp the radiation accordingly and then I know the level okay? detector so basically what I'm doing what I'm doing is that to I x-ray the thing yeah? I mean that's that's maybe yeah if you want to see inside our body we x-ray ourselves if you want to see inside a tank where material is inside and don't know how much I can x-ray it yeah? with some gamma radiation needs proper installation of course I cannot just pollute the environment with the gamma radiation needs also tests and so on so there are a lot of things to be fulfilled, however I can look through this with very aggressive materials. All those two things, yeah, they are simply called damping. Maybe here is light, sound, microwave. Or 
gamma radiation. Gamma radiation. Okay. X-ray. Okay. Also, two possibilities of checking the level inside. The advantage is, of course, it's also rather easy. Yeah? The disadvantage is you need to access it from the side, not at gamma, but here from the side. Yeah? And, of course, you need some, some allowance to do something like this from official side. Yeah? So there are special security measures that you do not get gamma burns on your employees. Then one method, I think you know, hmm? reflection method, it is called, whoop, Here is some sender. Here is some sender. And this is sending out some sort of wave, maybe sound or radiation. Yeah, radiation, uh, just electromagnetic wave, for instance. Maybe also light. Yeah? And then this will be reflected at the surface. And out of the time it takes until it is returned, I can measure the level. Actually, I measure, of course, the distance, this distance here. And if I know, if I know the height of the tank, then I know the level also. Yeah. So just I measure the time, the round trip time, yeah. and half of the round trip time is the travel time. Okay. And regarding on what method I have used, light and, and, and electromagnetic waves, they would travel with the speed of light, sound, ultrasound would travel with the speed of sound. Okay. Disadvantage of sound, advantage of sound is the time can be measured very accurate. Yeah, it's because it simply takes longer. Disadvantage of sound, speed of sound is depending on the pressure and on the temperature inside. Light is traveling very fast. This means that the that, that time measurement must be very very accurate yeah? however it does not really have influence if there is high pressure low pressure it does not make too much difference in this case yeah so sometimes you also do it with radar yeah if you're using light this is called leader also actually this is called reflection method Reflection method, yeah. measuring the time. If I do it with light, this thing is called leader. If I do it with radio waves, electromagnetic folds, this is called this radar. I think you notice light, light detection and ranging, radio detection and ranging, yeah. radar leader, and of course. There is sonar, sound detection ranging. Yeah. These are the things, yeah. these are the methods. I have one example for you, for a level, a real level measurement system. This is this thing here. Yeah. This thing here is a radar. Yeah. It's radar, open radar, there is the radar emitter, so it will be stick inside this way yeah? and here we do have this, this thing measuring head typical typical uh, mounting with this big nut here yeah? you can mount it on the wall yeah? here you can plug it in okay and of course there are some little operation operation screen <coughs> underneath oh makes sense it's underneath a detection screen 
that it do not get too dirty. And here you can operate this thing. If we would have power supplied it, we could, I don't know, set the distance and so on that we can calculate from the that we can calculate from the travel time to the height height filling height. Okay, this must be adjusted, of course, in the sensor. Okay. Yeah, and then it will output something. You can also can also scale, for instance, the in and output. The in and you can also scale the in and output. So what is four milliamps? What is twenty milliamps? And so on. So this is. This is how such a thing really, really looks like. Okay. Quite big. Okay. Quite big radar sensor. Okay. Exactly using this reflection method. Okay. Using this reflection method. So, actually, that's about all possible things. Yeah. We have seen the gauge glass. Yeah. Let's compare it. We have seen the looking of the gauge glass. Here's the swimmer, the displacement method, the measuring rod. Yeah. Then of course we do have the measuring of the hydrostatic pressure and the bead tube. Yeah. Then we do have the scale method, the weight method, yeah, then we do have the conductive method, the capacity method, we do have this rotary things, we have the plumb line system, then we have the damping method and the reflection method. Basically you have learned now quite some methods to measure measure levels in tanks. That's it for now. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.